Today we're going to make beet hummus. Yeah, beets. And so this is going to be delicious. I can't wait to see your comments below when you make this yourself at home. So today it's about beet hummus. And if you're new to this channel, The Biblical Nutritious, welcome. Welcome to my kitchen. Welcome to this YouTube channel. Make sure you hit the like button, well, if you like it, which I hope you do, and the subscribe so you get notified every time we post new videos. Well, that happens when you hit the bell. All right, I'm Annette Reeder, The Biblical Nutritionist. And you know what? I get to serve God's recipe for excellent health to you because you matter to me. And I just want you to know that. So we're going to start with our food processor here. And I'm going to add, I'm just gonna go ahead and take the top off. It's a little bit easier to work with when I have the top off. I'm going to put in first our tahini. Now this is, I got some tricks for you on this tahini. First of all, I made, this is my own personal tahini that I made and I have a video on that and I'll put that down below as well so you can get that. And this is just a super creamy tahini. I totally love making it myself. And you know, sometimes it's just expensive in the store. So if you don't have tahini and you don't wanna make it yourself or you haven't been out to the store to get it, you could use a nut butter instead. It makes a really interesting flavor. So to this tahini, which I'm actually using half tahini and half sunflower seed butter, I'm going to juice a lemon and we're gonna add that to it. Go ahead and juice that. Of course, I have juiced, um, used lots of different appliances for juicing. My goal is just to get as much of it out, much of the juice as I can. I don't like wasting food. All right, this is actually a very thick skin, uh, lemon, which it would actually would juice a little bit faster if I cut that very tip off. There we go. That will make it work much faster. Yep, there we go. So I'm going to add the juice of one lemon. You could also use a lime. They're both delicious. They would both work. To this, I'm going to add my garlic. You could mince the garlic first, you could chop the garlic first, or you could just, you know, hit it and peel it. We're going to blend this up, get this into a nice, nice smooth texture. Now you can definitely tell in the texture that I just showed you, it's a little bit thick, and that's because of the nut butter. So when you add nut butters, you might want to just go ahead and add a little bit of oil, or we can wait. I'm gonna go ahead and put some salt in there. I love blending my own salt. Now, we're gonna go ahead and add the chickpeas. What I was gonna say is, you could wait to see if you need oil after you've added the chickpeas. Now, I gotta tell you, I've got a video on how to make your own hummus and I really hope you watch that because there's a couple tricks that I teach you in that video about how to make the creamiest hummus ever. You know, I have made chunky hummus. <laughs> that should be like a hashtag, chunky hummus. I have made chunky hummus for a long time, just having a hard time making it really smooth and creamy like you buy in the store. Well, I learned the secret, but I'm not gonna tell you. You gotta go watch that video. All right, let's go ahead and blend this up. Now I can tell by looking at it, it's just a little bit thick, like I thought it might be because of the, uh, the nut butter that we use. So I'm just gonna pour just a little bit of olive oil in there. There we go. That was about a fourth of a cup. You could also use water. And I'm gonna go ahead and add, you could use some cayenne pepper. I, I like a little bit of dash of chili pepper in mine. Now we'll get that blending. Now I've already cooked my, my, I had actually three beets in here, but now we just have one. I already cooked them in some foil in the oven. It takes about an hour at 350, but you always wanna wrap them loosely in some foil. Now here's where I get to, change the look of my hands. You want to wrap them up, if you're not familiar with cooking beets, it, I, once I discovered how to cook beets, like I would never buy canned beets ever again, which I don't like canned vegetables anyway. You just want, you just want to throw them in there, you just clean them, don't peel them at all. And once they are baked and cooked nice and tender, the peeling will just push right off with your fingers. Super easy now. It also means you're going to have purple hands, but that's okay. And f well, there's a few other things that might turn purple. 
um, if you eat a lot of beets, uh, but we'll save that for a nutrition talk. All right, so let me go ahead and put that over here. I'm just gonna, let's see, I'll use this bowl right here. Well, actually, I don't even really need a bowl. I can just throw it right in my blender. I'm just gonna use one beet. I'm just gonna make it small enough to put in down the chute of the food processor. And I'm gonna add that in. And this is why we would call it beet hummus. All right, let's mix that up. beautiful I mean this should be served maybe at Easter or Passover it'd be delicious we have a beautiful creamy beet hummus oh, this is gonna taste so good you just push this a little bit out of the way here oh wow super creamy Super, super, super delicious. If you've got a good food processor, there is no reason to ever buy hummus from the store again. Remember, what I like to teach you is that the more you control your food, the more you control your health. So if you're not buying processed foods with you know, ingredients that you may not even know or be aware of are in the food, and you're making your own meals from real food that you can recognize and identify, then you win. You win today, you win tomorrow, and you win for your future and the future of your kids. So there we go. We have some beautiful, delicious, I know it's gonna be delicious, beet hummus, super creamy. And that's the key, the key is you want your hummus to be creamy. So I'm just gonna add a few little pieces of carrots here and the recipe actually calls for one cup of water, which I didn't use. I used a fourth a cup of olive oil, and that's what gave it the rich, creamy texture. Olive oil also kind of gives it a sheen, so it just looks beautiful in your dish. And just arranging my carrots here, just realize beets are so good for your kidneys and for your liver. They help to just, they help the liver and the kidneys to do their job, which is to continually, 24-7, 365, always be cleaning up your system. Whatever you decide to bring along, it then has to clean up. And it does it so well. But here's the other thing. Beets have amazing fiber. <laughs> you know I'm like the fiber queen, like hashtag fiber queen. You need to have lots of fiber in your diet, and this is going to deliver just amazing fiber in your diet. This is just going to have a burst of carotenoids. Carotenoids are very good for overall health. They're especially good for brain health. Vitamin A, carotenoids, when you have colors like this that just pop out at you, you know your brain's gonna say, this is gonna be a good day. So I really wanna encourage you to add beets to your diet, make some beet hummus, but wait a minute, beets have to be organic. So that's one food that there's no skipping on. And so I really want you to enjoy this with your family. I look forward to reading your comments down below. How did you enjoy the beet hummus? Was your family a little surprised that it was a hummus because of the color? And I'd love to hear how you like this recipe. Be sure and hit the like button if you like this video and share it with your friends. But you know, just subscribe down below and let me know that, hey, I'm on the right track teaching you about God's love because he loved us so much he gave us amazing food and he does care about you every day. And that reader, the biblical nutritionist, I get to serve you God's recipe for excellent health. And I'm so excited to be here with you.